Hello. I've got a special guest here today. My best beating buddy, other than Kristen, of course, uh, Mr. Neelay Patel of Silver, Silk, and More. What are you doing, Neelay? Hi, everyone. Delighted to be here. And I am stoked to like hang with you for a while. <laughs> I'm excited about the after party after this and hang with everyone else. And, you know, I'm just thankful and humbled that you would spotlight Silver, Silk, and More in with this amazing thing that you did put together this, well, not you solely, but Softflex Wire as a whole um, came together and put this amazing, incredible event on. And I'm just, I'm humbled. I am speechless. <laughs> well, well, I was telling everyone earlier today that I think you're the only company that doesn't sell Softflex that's part of our customer appreciation week. And that's just because you use so much Softflex craft wire and beading wire in your weekly tutorials on Tuesdays. And you have just been a mainstay for our, for our company and such a good friend to our company. So it just couldn't be a party without you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that was where I started, right? That's where we met was I had mm -hmm. a designer background and the first product, one of the first products I discovered in uh, publishing my first book with Kambach at that time, unbeknownst to me, was Softflex Wire because I just picked up this wire, started using it in my designs. Later on, branding became important because then, you know, you start to sort of, you need to talk about where to find the products and why yeah. you use them. As a designer and um, that, you know, knowledge that you have about it, you want to spread it with all of the customers and everybody. So once I did pick it up, once we did establish that it was Softflex Wire and the reasons, you know, I made a bullet point list of why I used it. Um, at that <laughs> point, we had met. So we were already had this foundation friendship as designers. And then many years passed by and I have my own company now and um, a completely different, unique product, which we'll get into later. But mm -hmm. it's just been a great synergy for our design capabilities and our products to come together in a happy marriage and we still get to work to this day together. Yeah, I mean our history intertwines because you found Silver Silk at a JTV experience with Softlex. You were there on behalf of Softlex showing your designs and we met uh, somebody who worked for Silver Silk or owned Silver Silk, Silk, I can't quite remember. They were designing for Silver Silk and they gave us each a bag of Silver Silk mm -hmm. and you took yours home and just like fell in love with it and <laughs> made a whole book about it and then became the owner of it. <laughs> no. I took mine home and I'm pretty sure I was like, I don't know how to use this. <laughs> <laughs> but I've learned over the years because you've shown me uh, what to do with it. And there's just it's some there's something about it. But no, I would I would not give myself that much credit. My bag stayed in the bag. My my batch of silver silk stayed in the bag for a while. But I was you know I had done a few shows at that point too, and I had met Jesse James Beads in fact, and had been inspired by their bead mixes, and then the idea of combining silver silk. So I think upon concepting my second book, that's when I did bring it out of the bag finally. And I was like, sort of, you know, in that frame of mind of like, I gotta get these this design set done. Mm -hmm. And by that point, I was establishing a relationship with Silver Silk and more, and got to know the, the owners more, you know, became more familiar with them, and then learned more about their products and like how it applied to my aesthetic and what I can do with it as a designer and really stretch my imagination. And I think I've always really liked mixed media design in general. And so mm -hmm. it just seemed to work with the, the amount of, you know, the palette of different materials that I had to work with right. to combine it into something. So my design skill set grew and the materials that I was using and then to bring it home with the ownership of myself now <laughs> and really take the the existing not just like the company. ownership of the company but you make the the silver silk now i do yeah you have the own like before 
Um, and I don't know if this is proprietary information, but it was made out outside. You know, it wasn't made in in house by the company. It was made by an exterior company that worked with them. And now Neele has a machine and he makes the wire and he comes up with all these new concepts for the wire too. Um, we were just talking about his latest like mind blowing <laughs> it's, it's item that he's working on. But that, that part is really been interesting as like a um, bystander just to watch how the evolution of how things have happened. I mean, it's really truly amazing and been really lovely to watch play out. For sure. It's, it's been an interesting journey on my end. I never thought I'd be making the product and then learned how to do it just organically. And once I did figure out what sort of machine I needed um, to make different wires and to have that open ended capability, got that finally in. And then the idea of learning was daunting. I've never been book smart in my life. That's not where my brain exists. And I don't read information. I don't believe that at all. It's so true. It's so true. I don't read a whole lot of it, but I am visually very like adaptive to stuff. So whenever I see something done, you know, monkey see monkey do sort of a thing, I can replicate it pretty easily because I understand just looking at stuff. So mm -hmm. whenever I was on the machine, it was just something that clicked because it was in my hands and I was able to physically do something to get it to work. So, yeah. you know, and it never really took reading a manual to do it. I just had to get on the, the contraption and do it, you know? But once I got more experience out of it, made a lot of mistakes because that's part of the learning process. Um, everything just seemed to kind of come together. Once I did that, I was able to then take the existing product and innovate it and turn it into something that customers will be more excited about. And the color line, the type of um, different materials to, that I use to knit, the chains, um, it all just, it's so much fun. It is so, I was telling you this before we started the video, in fact, of how much pleasure this brings to my soul, my creative inner fire to just work on that machine. Yeah, Joan says she started following you before Beads and Bubbles, which I miss, by the way. There was a short-lived <laughs> Beads and Bubbles show and it was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when and when you announced you purchased silver silk it just seemed like a totally a natural fit and um leanne says she's been watching you before you bought silver silk too so a lot of us have seen this like natural progression play out and it's just been such a joy to watch you grow a company that i mean really you've grown it into something so special so kudos to you friend i'm so that makes me feel so good and I'm just again so humbled and you know it's not just me doing it it is the customer's input and uh, feedback that I receive and their involvement because we've got our own community now so it's so easy to reach out and just say what do you guys need to create you know this is the foundation of the company Neely is such a smooth guy <laughs> <laughs> that silver silk was a perfect smooth like silver silk <laughs> well, when I first met Neela and, and Thomas was just mentioning that we first met in Milwaukee at the Beat and Button show right. and he walked up to the booth and I just instantly knew we were going to be friends. <laughs> I, I mean, I think a lot of people have this um, feeling with you, Neela, because you're just so easygoing and easy to talk to for almost anybody. Um, and I just knew, I just, I was like, this is going to be my, one of my greatest friends. And I don't, <laughs> I, don't know, I mean, Stop. <laughs> it's true. And, and I, I think I even said that to maybe Jamie or Kristen and they were like, you are so weird. <laughs> like, I just, I just know, like in my bones, like we're meant to be friends and, um, and you've been a wonderful friend in addition to, you know, colleague through Silver Silk over the years. So thank you for that. Absolutely. It's because of Softlex's support, um, not just our friendship, but it extends to Scott and Mike, the team behind the scenes, Thomas, um, Damien, uh, mm -hmm. Jamie, everybody that Kristen um, and whoever else is involved, like it takes a village, right? But then 
um, I remember Thomas emailed me one day asking for some quotes and stuff, and he's asking coworkers for them too. And then, so maybe he didn't mean, uh, mean it this way, but he said specifically he's reaching out to coworkers. And then it kind of hit home to me of like, I'm in this circle. So, mm -hmm. you know, when Softflex company, like they, they take care of their customers, but they also suck you into the family too. So. <laughs> Um, it, we do you're an honorary member yeah you know it's that's why i do this stuff though it's it's not it's not a financial gain necessarily but it's the idea that i get to share my creativity and you know the the company is progressing design as well um i mm -hmm. get to show my aesthetic and my design and push the ideas out there and for me that's been so important and the, really the core foundation of why this company exists. So and yeah. everything else is a byproduct of it, but we've helped so many people, um, Softflex Company, Silver Silk and more, Jesse James, mm -hmm. other, like so many other companies, um, beatshop.com, you name it, like through the pandemic and this is now a virtual world as well. So think of how many people we get to just be friends with. Yeah. Um so I was just thinking, I don't know if you've seen Finding Dory, but there's this pigeon and it needs to, they need the pigeon to like hone in on them so they can get somewhere. And I was just thinking I was like that pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Neely is going to be my friend. <laughs> no, but really, um, even conversations we've had, I think have laid seeds for really important things. Like, I think some of the conversations we had when we were taping uh, Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels mm -hmm. about how business owners should be able to interact more and learn from each other, I think that was a seed for the great bead extravaganza. Yeah. And so then when we started doing live beading parties with people and, um, and Andrew and I had some conversations, that little seed could then grow into a much bigger idea um, you know, that became something really wonderful. And this is also kind of another growth from that idea of like, how can we all work together and lift each other up in this industry so that we can all do better and everyone can get the beads that they want. Um, so thank you for those wonderful conversations too, because I feel like we don't get to talk very often, but when we talk, it's like, like all this information. It's more quality than quantity with yeah. us because whatever time we do spend together it feels like a lot of it feels like we do we we get so much done in a short amount of time mm -hmm. and we just leave the conversation feeling more rich than like where we started excited and like full mm -hmm. of ideas and yeah it's really really wonderful well let's do uh let's look at your project so this kit sold out right it did and i ripped my project apart <laughs> so I, don't, I don't have a physical copy of it until the end of this video whenever it's all reconstructed hopefully you remember how to put it back together <laughs> for the most part yeah there might be a few things that change but we'll see <laughs> okay well, i'm gonna go to your hand cam is that good perfect Awesome. Awesome. Well, let me get some stuff out of the way because yeah, this this came in a kit. The kit sold out, but I'm going to go over each of the items and parts and pieces so that if you are interested in a similar design, um, you can pick up these items from either SilverSilkOnline.com, Softflex Wire, or excuse me, SoftflexCompany.com for the beading wire and for the craft wire. Um, so let's see, let's start with the centerpiece. So there was a pendant that I made using this little form here. And these are just some triangle blanks that I had on my website. And I wanted to do some easy wire wrapping that required no wire wrapping skills because that is not my strong suit. But <laughs> faking stuff certainly is. And in this case, I was able to make the <laughs> pretty great beaded thing happen in the middle of this triangle blank with uh, with just a few materials. So Do you have me... more of those triangle blanks? Yes, yeah, I have them on the site. These would make fantastic earrings. I'm I... just saying everybody, go buy two. Well, actually they come in a pair, so. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a pretty good deal. 
um, for these things. And I, I love the shape. There's just something about that inverted triangle that's just really cool. So yeah, great. Yeah. So okay. So you got the triangle blank, and then you just need some 26 gauge. Let's see if I can bring it out here. And uh, of course, there's a sticky back, so I got to really peel these things off here. There we go. <laughs> you need some Softflex craft wire. I'm using vintage bronze because it matches my antique brass color here pretty well, so it disappears. And uh, I just use a 26 gauge as well, so it's a nice, thin, easy, um, easy wire to work with. And uh, I, yeah, I cut about uh, six inches or so of wire to start with. So once you do that, you're actually going to put the wire on the back side of the triangle blank, just like that. And what you're going to do is wrap this in and you're going to want to go underneath where that craft wire crosses. So you could see that that craft wire crosses um, that triangle blank back there. So you want to go underneath it and you want to do this to both pieces of wire. So I just turned it around. Let me keep it right side up so you guys can see what I'm doing. So there we go. I'm going to go underneath once again. And I'm just going to nicely like tighten it up to the best of my ability. Oh, you know what? I did not go underneath that wire. So let me try that again. You could really tell when it's looped around. Um, it'll feel loose, but once you get it correctly on there, kind of like a little uh, knot, if you will, a little slip knot or something, um, then you'll really feel that it is nice and stable. So I'm just going to use my chain nose pliers to kind of wiggle it and get it nice and tight, and then you can really just lift straight up. And you'll see that your wire is secure there at the bottom, just like this is. And at this point, you can actually add beads to both pieces of wire. So it looks like I have a three, maybe four millimeter bead right over here. This is a matte gray. So I'm going to string that on first. And the idea here is to graduate in size so it starts to fill up that triangle blank. So then you'll start with your six to eight millimeter or uh, sorry continue with it and then i just put in a little metal, metal spacer for fun um it kind of you know kills some of the space but it also just adds a really nice texture to the design and um it's probably closer to 10 millimeters as well in width and uh, i have it facing up toward the next bead and this bead is probably close to 12 to 15 millimeters so there really is a great size progression there so at this point, you can do one of two things. I wrapped a, each of those wires around the base part of my triangle there on either side of that loop. Uh, or you can even take both of these wires and wrap it within the loop if you wanted to. I found that it was easier to wrap on either end. So that's what I'm going to do for the wires here. And I love, again, this the quality of craft wire that you use just makes it easier um for the fingers i think <laughs> if you use yeah. really, really bad craft wire it's going to be very tedious and annoying to put together but i've always had really good luck with the softflex line of products so of course i'm going to insist that you guys pick up a spool of this Thank you. Yeah, Neil doesn't sell our craft wire. He uses it all the time. <laughs> really do. Um, you can find it on our website, which is softlexcompany.com. It comes from 18 gauge is the thickest, although we're thinking about getting a thicker gauge. Oh, wow. All the way down to 28 gauge as the thinnest. And it comes in lots of different colors. And we also have some square and some half round options. Um, that can be really fun to play with. That is awesome. That's a really great variety of different types of wires. Yeah, typically I've used, I think, 26 gauge and 20 gauge in my tutorials. So, uh, but they're really readily available on the Softflex company website, which is nice. 
Yeah, definitely. Craft wire is something people don't always think of Softflex for, um, but we have a great supply of craft wire and it is made here in the U.S. and it's non-tarnishing and hypoallergenic. And it goes with the silver silk really well, which is why Neele loves to use it in his projects. True. Yeah, the colors match up just perfectly. So I just have a little bit of wire there that I'm, uh, you know, kind of finishing out the ends. I just trimmed it and then just kind of worked it around. But you could see, like, I just got a really simple wrap without doing too much work to it. And uh, you can kind of push the beads wherever they need to go and really make that pendant stick out. So if you wanted just to make some earrings and call it good, you've got two great ones now. But you know me, I'm never about simplicity. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Yeah. I do love these though. The bend it just by itself or as a pair of earrings, I think would just be stunning. I think so too. Um, okay, well the next part of our design here is the bottom beaded area. So um, those of you that did pick up the kit received a bead mix that you can mix match string however you want to. And I just had this really great pattern in mind um, of beads that worked for this project. But you guys can, of course, use any beads because this idea is very open-ended. But I am stringing it on extreme um, sterling silver soft flex wire in medium. And this is their 10 foot, excuse me, 10 foot spool. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's the one. So I'm using essentially silver capture chain, which I'll introduce to you guys that are not familiar with what capture chain is, but I wanted to match the extreme silver to that particular chain for knitted wire. Uh, Everyone's but, talking about the weather. What's your weather like in Tulsa? Ugh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's been steamy. I was out running around today and it was awful. I was basically in a hot oven the entire day and I had to take two showers to like really oh no uh, oh uh, it's it's July it is well it's turning August soon but I'm ready for fall <laughs> I bet yeah, it's 81 degrees here in Benicia and oh, it's wow absolutely beautiful do you have any room in your house for me <laughs> Always, always. <laughs> you might have a couple kids climbing on you, though. So uh -huh. I do. They may they the may kids. challenge you to air hockey again, like last time when you visited. Yeah. Evie <laughs> kicked my butt at that, and I was trying. That's the sad part. <laughs> 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 I'm just not good at those sort of games. Yeah. But clearly, you have a very talented daughter. What <laughs> 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 doing? That's funny. So yeah, okay, so I am just stringing on the same pattern. I use my pearls within the kit to kind of bring the eye down toward the pendant and balance it out with my three gray beads size-wise. So there's some really good scale and um, symmetry that's happening with this design. And again, you can kind of customize this however you prefer with your own set of beads or with the kit that you got. Totally up to you. Very open-ended. There's always some really great bead mixes out there. I know you guys carry a ton of them um, here lately that coordinate with your mystery chits, in fact. So really, really accessible things. Okay, so I have strung my beads on, right? And I'm just gonna focus all of this um, beaded part on, you know, toward the, the bottom half of the necklace. So at this point I can grab my crimps and of course I would never buy soft flex wire without soft flex crimps. There's just, they go hand in hand and I love the two aspects that you, Sarah, have often, and Kristen and everyone else at soft flex have talked about with, uh, with the crimps and that they are double the wall thickness of other crimps out there in the market is important if you're really trying to get a very secure solid hold and the fact that they don't have a seam just makes me feel very comfortable with crimping each and every single time which beading wire did you use i don't know if i caught that oh i use the uh, extreme silver mm -hmm. in medium nice 
It's been so fun seeing all the different items that the presenters have chosen to use over this week. We've had like soft touch O and O all the way up to O two four. We've had craft wire in multiple sizes, and it's just been kind of fun to see what everybody gravitates towards naturally. Yeah, I you know, it's funny because remember back in the day, I actually started out with the fine and weaving mm -hmm. bead weaving and stuff, and then later in life when I couldn't see anymore. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> you're so old. I'm so, uh, my eyes, man, they're just, you know, not what they used to be, but I still love the thin wire. I just haven't found yet a use for it, but I think later down the road, I probably will. But for now, I've been enjoying using the medium craft, uh, medium soft flex wire. Okay, so I didn't get to talk about the second half of this piece. So. I have strung one of my custom uh, end caps onto the end of my design here, and then I'll crimp the same with the other side. But uh, hi, Joyce Trowbridge. I miss seeing her and her sister. They're such lovely people. And they, they are. During this uh, event as well. They'll be at the after party. Yay! Okay, good. Uh, anyway, this is a single strand end cap, and uh, it is custom. It is a uh, custom cast, excuse me, couldn't find the words, <laughs> to work with my capture and pearlesque chain, um, which you'll see the capture chain here in a second. As you can kind of see, there are teeth that are aligned inside of the end cap channel there. And these mm -hmm. teeth grasp onto the ball chain that is inside of the capture chain. So you don't need any special glue or really any special tools per se. I'm using a pair of wide nose pliers that I'll cover here in a second. But, you know, once you crimp it, you're pretty much good to go. I'm just going to do- The first time I did the these end caps, I was like, there's no way this is holding without glue. I don't believe it. <laughs> and everybody, all the people commenting were like, no, really, really, it'll hold. I'm like, no way is it holding. I do not <laughs> believe you. And then I put it together and lo and behold, it held just fine. Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I work very closely with the manufacturer of them to make sure that quality and consistency has been the same across the board. And, you know, I didn't invent the, the chain, the end cap by any capacity, but right. it was nice to carry over and make sure that the quality remained high end, um, especially through my production as well. And, you know, I've used these end caps for other items as well, such as leather cord, um, uh, cup chain actually works well with this as well. It's, it's just, it's amazing. All right, so I'm cutting this right off the spool because I don't like to waste any beading wire that I don't need to. And you're using the sterling silver color in the extreme, right? Yeah, 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 totally. It's so bright and brilliant. Um, and I, if you're using more translucent beads, it's just prettier. These aren't necessarily uh, transparent by any means but I think if I used a darker color beading wire in it it wouldn't have like a glowy uh, you know interior per se so uh -huh. thing to keep in mind I think as as you work with the different colored beading wires okay I'm going to string on my other end cap here Shelly wants to know if the large blue gray beads are possible to get anywhere um, I don't know. <laughs> Did they come from Jesse James beads, possibly? Quite possibly. I, I curated the mix myself, and so I got to... I have my sources, um, and you know, <laughs> Magician never really reveals his or her secrets, but... um, Right. As far as a retail big box company, yeah, I would definitely check out Jesse James beads, and I think there might be some other participating companies here that might have strands of similar beads in fact um as we're thinking about it so yeah <laughs> that's my answer <laughs> probably not the most helpful unfortunately but you did put together a list of some parts and pieces that you have yeah 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 so on my website actually i don't really need to string this through the beads i can probably crimp it here and just trim it um and by the way, whenever I do crimp this, I like to kind of lay it on the table and make sure that it 
bends and bows correctly. Because if I get it too tight and it's stiff, it's not going to lay correctly. So just kind of bear that in mind and, you know, just make sure that everything is um, laying accordingly. Um, but yeah, so if you go to my website, silversilkonline.com, and um, at the footer of the home page, and really any other page on the website, and there's some buttons on the home page that lead you to a blog that you can visit. And within the blog, it mentions the customer week that Subflex Wire is having. And awesome. within that blog post, I have put a materials list in there. Great. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, resources are great. I know folks have the same questions and want to know all the information. And it just seemed to make sense for me to put that together when when I was able to. Mm -hmm. So um, for the long-awaited capture chain reveal, here's what it looks like. <laughs> this is the <laughs> silver color. And I knit the chain um, over a silver-plated ball chain. And uh, the silver knitted wire is also uh, tarnish resistant and you know it doesn't flake any of the colors or anything with wear and um, sustains a beauty over time. It is very flexible and it's very supple and um, the knitted you know the knitted um, texture adds that intricate touch to this chain. So it's really luxurious and high-end and you can really do a lot of different things with it especially because it has these open knits so in past videos on my youtube channel especially um you can find quite a bit of resources where i've taken you know beading wire craft wire thread needle you name it through the knits and you can really stitch uh or string or whatever with the knitted wire in many different design ways uh, in this case, I'm just using it as the necklace rope. Uh, is it burlesque? This one is not burlesque, but that is a good question. And I can uh, show yeah, you. Yeah, what that. makes one burlesque and one not burlesque? Uh, this will be a perfect example. So let me show you this one. This one um, is a fairy pink chain. That Ooh. Is, uh, and I made this as a limited edition, but I kind of want to keep it as a permanent thing on my product page, but um, what makes it burlesque is that this particular chain has a holographic rainbow tinsel that's mm -hmm. been knitted over a colored ball chain. And the holographic rainbow tinsel adds a special sparkle whenever it's then knitted over with wire. So you get this multi-layered effect that happens and the camera can really only capture so much to what the naked eye sees and you know how lighting affects it and stuff we're seeing it under some bright bright light right now but in natural daylight this is just so sparkly mm -hmm. and um i've been again the idea of innovating my product which let me bring out another type of chain where i use um a different color tinsel so my packaging is changing over time and I'm getting better, <laughs> better packaging. <laughs> but anyway. The packaging is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. I'm, I'm working on things on the back end. This one has a blue holographic tinsel that's been um, woven over silver ball chain and knitted over that is like a dark blue, almost a lapis color wire. So this, the name of this cord is called Waterfall, and it's been a fan favorite because it's just simply gorgeous. But you see how illuminated that looks compared to um, just, you know, versus a capture chain. That's sort of shiny because it's blue. But let me show you something that what a normal one would look like. I love that color, the blue and the pink. Look at the blue and pink together. Oh, isn't that pretty? I think I see a future kit. <laughs> <laughs> No, this, you know what this reminds me of is a resort chic kit. Already. Oh, yeah, I did that kit already. Kit already. <laughs> <laughs> I love those colors together. So this one uses no tinsel, and it's the same exact wire and ball chain. This uses the blue holographic. Oh. Isn't that just a revelation of... That's so different. I know, crazy. So... Huh. Yeah. That's, uh, thank you, Leanne, for that question. 
That was a great, that was a great question. question. Okay, I am ready for some crimping to happen. So I do what I like to call conditioning my wire, my knitted wire. What that means is when I trim the knitted wire, the knitted aspect of it is not going to fray. That's just part of the, the material because it is a knitted wire chain and just the technology of how that knit is put together um, prevents it from fraying. So when you do cut it though, the wire tends to kind of bunch up here at the end and you get some little remnant pieces that tend to just stick on. And I call these things little wire fuzzies, but you can really just pluck them off. And you want to do that because they get in the way of crimping. And you want to make sure that your wire, your knitted wire end is very cleaned up. Um, before I need to do this more. I feel like I missed this step. It is, yeah. So within the website, silversilkonline.com, and in the footer, you'll see a page that says Silver Silk School for Design. And mm -hmm. I have within there, it's like a separate blog almost, but a bit more mm -hmm. focused educational resources. I've got 10 tips for better silver silking, and it covers all of these things. Ooh, that's great. I bet Thomas could find a link to that and post it. I think it would be so valuable, and it does mention Softflex resources actually within that um, that particular blog post as well. Uh, but yeah, okay, so you can also open up the end cap a little bit more if you want to. If it's going to be a little uncomfortable, you could just take your pliers and just, you know, gently eat, uh, nudge it open some. A couple of millimeters always makes a huge difference. So then you kind of just stuff the, the capture chain within the channel of your end cap and then you can take a pair of wide nose pliers and these actually have been dipped in some tool magic that Sarah, you and James were very kind to send to me after <laughs> fighting the whole using nylon jaw pliers, which is such a bad idea. And I apologize that I've been preaching for that for so long. And this was a huge revelation for me because the, the tool magic grips the end cap without sliding anywhere and it prevents it from any sort of abrasion so this has changed my crimping game dramatically awesome and do, so you like the tool magic oh are you kidding me i i just i, I mention it in every video every every tutorial oh. that uses um end caps and crimping yeah i absolutely recommend it Maybe Thomas can get a quote from you for the description of it at some point. I would love to. Yeah, it wouldn't be just a small quote, though. You know, I'd have a lot of things to say. About a long paragraph <laughs> from you. <laughs> I would just write an entire blog post about how great Tool Magic is. Oh, well, we'll take that, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it is great. I know. Um, oh, your project cam is going down for a second. Here, I'm going to flash over to me and I'll chit chat while you figure out what's going on. That's been happening all week long. I don't know why the phones are having a difficult time. So you just kind of go on and off. So while you guys were visiting with Miss Jamie Yoshida of the Bead Gallery, I broke out, I had at the last great bead extravaganza, I had bought some seashells from Hawaii from her. And she also put in this great little glass piece um, into this mix that I bought. You can still probably buy them on our website. And um, and so I, I took them out and I started beading with the cloud that we painted this morning. And I realized the marine color made it look a little bit more like a wave. And so I did this really fun beachy design. And um, so this is super cute. And uh, you can find those seashells from Jamie at the Beat Gallery in Honolulu. And, um, and we have some more of these little cloud wave things available from the Summer Rain Design Kit. So you can grab those on the Softflex company website. And then I thought I'd show you while Neela is still working on his camera, I have the design from earlier today. If you missed the 1030 show, you can still rewatch it. And we painted 
using vintage patina, we painted those really beautiful cloud shapes that Allegory Gallery made for us um, uh, for the summer rain design kit. So I painted this one white gold and I painted this one marine color. You can see kind of the difference. And then I turned this one sideways and did this one um, the other direction. Kristen used it this way. So it's really, really uh, flexible in the different ways that you can use it. And then I just added in some really lovely beads from that kit and this great big blue tassel, which you can find in one of our tassel sets um, on our website, softlexcompany.com. And I'm not too sure. I see Neela still here, but I'm his- so here. Uh, I'm so sorry. And I think my okay. phone just like was not gonna have it. So I had to reset it. <laughs> so I'm coming back in. Um, okay. A couple seconds here. Okay, take your time. I'll we'll chit chat while you're getting reset up. Okay. So we're gonna have an after party. It's gonna be at four thirty. I just want to thank all of you who have stuck with us throughout the week and seen all of our wonderful presentations. Thank you for all of your orders, not only for Softlex Company, but for all these great presenters who have helped us out from Allegory Gallery right at the beginning all the way till right now, Nile from Silver Silk. I know a lot of the presenters are getting a lot of wonderful orders and that just helps all of these small businesses so much. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts and I hope you'll enjoy um, checking in with us on um, at 4.30 and we'll have multiple presenters there to answer any questions you have and just kind of have a good time. I'm gonna open a bottle of wine and have a glass of wine. I'm, it's gonna be ravioli time, like times 10. All right, I'm bringing Nile back in. Here he is. I, I feel like we just had a commercial break. With yeah, Softlex commercial break. And just so you're aware, this I in my mug I don't have coffee or tea. It's wine. I just put a big one of wine in my mug. You're drinking wine out of a mug. I did not want to compromise my use of soft, the Softflex mug. I'm just saying, whatever it takes. Oh my gosh, Delay. We do have a um, commemorative mug for Customer Appreciation Week with Neelay's adorable face on it. <laughs> and I'll show you that uh, after he finishes his project. Yeah, we were basically, before the commercial interruption there, um, we were basically just putting on all the end caps on our design and really just wrapping that portion of this demonstration up. And I wanted to show you something else, Sarah, um, hopefully if we've got time um, demo wise, cause I, I'm in love with this other design that I did and I, I kind of wanted to talk through it with you and, you know, just show you some other capabilities of Silver Silk and Softflex magic, if you will. But yeah. I, uh... Real fast, I think we need to put this on a t-shirt. Thomas says, wine is wine, mugs, bags, boxes, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when Thomas is right, he's kind of right. And apparently I was wine shaming you. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> oh, wait, who was wine shaming me? Oh, you were? No, I don't think that's I didn't take it as wine shaming. <laughs> can, the can, the e can the triangles be used for earrings oh. or are they too heavy? You know, I would say that these are probably a little too heavy because of the glass bead. Um, if you used a different type of bead, such as acrylic or mm -hmm. a small piece of glass beads, then they probably would be too heavy. Yeah, I would say for my preference, I if I were to wear earrings, which I, I rarely do, but whenever <laughs> I do, <laughs> um, I would prefer to, them to be lighter weight and feel comfortable. So yeah, just uh, just watch the materials that you would use for something like this. So beautiful oh, necklace. Thank you. Um, yeah, so what I also forgot to explain is the length here that you would cut. Um, normally, as, as part of my product offerings, I have remnant bags that I like to do with stuff that's come off the machine that's either slightly defective and I can't really put it out as regular inventory, but then I can still sell it as 
you know, because parts and pieces can be used for it. But um, I just got a bunch of scraps over time. Right now I'm, I'm fresh out, but I intend to have some by the next great beat extravaganza in stock. Um, but this, this length, you know, is probably closer to about five or six inches. And the normal capture chain spool comes on a three foot length. It comes in a three foot length. And so you can really get some mileage for just the three foot spool. Um, or of course you can just wait for a remnant bag later in life, um, whatever your preference is, or you might just have some scraps at home and those are gonna be pretty easy to use for a design like this. So you get that mixed, um, mixed media effect with still with a cohesive design and you've done a lot of different techniques, but not be too over the top with it. Which brings me to my next idea and design, if, uh, if I can share it with you, Sarah. Please do, yeah. So um, I, got, I hope you guys, if you have any questions on this, I, I guess Sarah can fill me in if- um, I right. will, yeah. yeah. So, okay, so I love this design and Ooh. I just wanted to kind of talk about it because there's obviously, this is Softflex beading wire. And mm -hmm. I had mentioned earlier that wire wrapping is really not my thing because it's just another great craft develop, like uh, the skill set used for it is just probably, I'm not the best at it. So of course me, I'm trying to look for cheats that I can replicate something that <laughs> looks like it's wire wrapping, but it's not really. Um, so I kind of wanted to show how to do this on the side of the donut here with some soft flex wire. Yes, please do. That yeah. looks awesome. Thank you. And yeah, I just, uh, part of my product offerings is this flat mesh which has been a very popular product and the crimps that go with it are a little different, but um, have my stamp on it and are just a really great um, pairing for something like this. So let me scoot so this down. And if you've got some donuts at home, I don't have any in the shop, but I know there are some stores within this craft uh, or this uh, weekend experience yeah. Or some, you know. I bet Jamie Yoshida has some donuts like that. Oh, perfect. Yes. Or maybe Andrew at Allegory Gallery. Yes, for sure. Yeah, he probably would have them. Or He's Abby or Kelly or any of the bead stores, really. Mm -hmm. Donuts are such a staple. They really are. And I haven't used many before. And I wanted to, I found this at a crafts or at a, at a gem fair that just happened a few weeks ago. And believe it or not, I got this for a dollar. Um, here, Whoa. I, I know. It, I think it found me because I was in like one of those bins where you have to kind of dig for stones and stuff, and it's you know obviously discounted because there's something something wrong with it. But then I looked and I found this treasure. I'm just like everybody else. I love a good treasure hunt, and I'll just waste hours and hours going through this little box of stones for no reason. Um, but whenever I find stuff, it's always exciting. One of the demonstration pieces that we used to take to the beach shows, like, you know, 15 or 18 years ago, was this piece with these donuts, and it had soft flex macrame around it. Very, in, It looks very similar to this. Yeah. And it was one of Scott's favorite designs that we would show, um, Scott being one of the owners. And so this is fun to see. I, I'll have to send him a picture of it so he can see what you've done with the wire. He'll love it. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah, I would be completely flattered by that. Okay, so I just made a loop and I'm just gonna do a basic crimp, but I would probably prefer using the magical crimpers just cause it makes a nice little bead there at the end. Um, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just gonna do a regular crimp and uh, trim off my end here. So you'll, you'll want to do a little discreet little loop there at one end. And this is the part where you'll hook your jump ring onto and, um, you know, have it connected to your, to your silver silk. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and string on a bead. This happens to be uh, roughly five millimeters, give or take. And then what I'm going to do is put it right up against my donut. And you can really use any size bead for this. If you wanted to go big with big beads, you can absolutely do that. Or if you even used fine soft flex wire, because I'm using the medium, um, you could probably even use seed beads to do this. Mm, nice. Yeah. I'm going to go back up through the bead like that. 
and then I'm going to string on two beads. You're a beading <laughs> genius. Did you know that? <laughs> I Isn't it you guys? Are you Give me like a heart or a thumb up if you think he is a beading <laughs> genius. <laughs> Watch his so hearts crazy. blow in. I'm telling you. Okay, so I strung on two beads and then I'm gonna go back through the donut center there. And then I'm going to just kind of stack these together to where there's one bead that sticks up and then one is sort of parallel to my uh, donut there. And I'm gonna go up through that last bead again. So this Easy. is sort of that macrame technique I think that you're referring to just a little bit. Similar, uh, yeah. Yeah. So you can continue to do this all the way around, or I just did it, you know, on the top half here and uh, ended in the same format as I begun where I just strung on a crimp, made a small loop, crimped it, and then trimmed off the end there. And then I can hook my jump rings and my so uh, silver silk wire onto it. And uh, down here, yeah. I just made a little tassel. So let me scooch this. And I'll, yeah, I'll do this tassel. Yeah, not that fun? I just use a piece of flat mesh strung both onto the singular crimp that I have. And these crimps come in a package of four for the flat mesh crimps. And I mm -hmm. uh, just made a bunch of little beaded tassels and I made a yeah. um, magical crimper there at the end to make a little um, a ball with the crimp. Mm -hmm. You made a head pin using soft flax, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you guys have done that in plenty of videos. In fact, oh yeah, uh huh. So very, very easy, fun technique to innovate with. So again, I'll just string on two beads and uh, sort of stack my beads accordingly. You can use your thumb to hold it in place. Go down through the center and then up through that next bead. If you join the Silkies on Facebook, I had. One of my silkies just posted a design that used, um, I can't remember who it was for the life of me. I think it was, oh, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> but don't name someone remember. if you don't know for sure. I, know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I, I don't want to quote myself on that one, but um, or I just leave it as a mystery and you'll have to join the group and see. But uh, they, they did their interpretation of this design and it, I am just blown away by what the silkies are producing with some you know basic tutorial and um, and their own stash of things. So they inspire me and, you know, I inspire them. Nile, try a third row. Okay. Have to get more beads out. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. <laughs> oh. And then Kristen said, I do, I do. I think he's a beating genius. He always <laughs> blows me away with his ideas. They are intricate and gorgeous every time. Oh my gosh, you guys. I feel the same way about Kristen and her designs too. And she's quite the explorer of different arts and styles and things and you know, motivates me to, to try other things too. So from one beating genius, Kristen to another, I admire. <laughs> Kristen is absolutely amazing, and I don't know what I would ever do if she were not my coworker. Uh, you would lose your mind. I would. Lose my mind. I wouldn't. Half my mind would be gone, like just gone. I mean, really, she's my she's my second half. I love it. But yeah, I mean, that's that's basically the demonstration. So you could see if you do a dual color, which I did, it might be kind of fun to do half the pendant in a different color bead and then do half the other pendant in a different color. Um, and the wire seems to also work. So there's some really open-ended ideas that you can do with this that I'm sure I will revisit down the road um, as I continue to grow the library of tutorials that I do as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, will your wire go back through that bead again on the top? Could uh, you actually string a third row above it? I guess I didn't understand a third row. Do you want me to do another loop thing? So where your wire is, yeah. send it through back through that bead on top. Oh, through here. Mm-hmm. And then you could add another bead right there. 
I see what you're getting well, at. You could keep I building know. from there. I didn't even. I think that's maybe what she was suggesting. But Thank I. You. you are a genius. I'm not the design genius here. I think it is really the silkies and our stuff <laughs> like VIP people. But that leaves your wire in the wrong place. So then you have to build all the way back to get your wire in, <laughs> in the right place. Again. I would use bigger beads or something because it doesn't uh -huh. back up as well. Yeah, as well. but definitely there are some possibilities there for whoever had asked that question. Yeah, absolutely. Vicky. All right, Vicky, we're challenging you. <laughs> Yeah, we want to see what do you do? Yeah, what do you do when you add a third row? <laughs> Very you didn't cool. Sign up for a challenge, did you, Vicky? <laughs> <laughs> She's fine. Very She's nice. Fine. That's beautiful, Neelay. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I'm so. Do you glad. have anything else new going on in your shop that we should know about? Um, let's see. I do have some designs I can share that use actually some uh, craft wire from Softflex and. I just took a awesome. puzzle in my community lately and because I've got this mist. Can I talk about the mystery kits that I have? Yes, please okay. do. Yeah. I have this kit called Road to El Dorado that is out. It's already 60% sold out. Um, so probably not many left on the, on the shelf here soon. But um, within the mystery kit, I, I do a, a very planned project. And so this was one of the project offerings and you could see how Chop Shop Yay. is. Um, and this is part of the bead mix that I curate personally in it. So we're Are those sequined beads? They are, isn't that wild? I'm in love. Yep. I mean, just for these beads alone. <laughs> I think Those are so cool. awesome. Yeah, and you get these wild components and stuff and um, Oh, here's where your the wire works into into the magic. Mm -hmm. though. So we're going to be doing a lot of wire wrapping and some some accent wire wrapping there and connecting this design together. You also get a pair of end caps in the kit, and I'm just ruining the kit for the surprise. I'm so sorry for those of you <laughs> who did want to be surprised. Surprise! I'm ruining it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're you're as good with secrets as I am. I uh, yeah, it never lasts for too long. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but okay, so I did this sort of as my my color palette for the month, um, this green and gold, since it's that road to El Dorado. So this project we're going to make during August 10th, during my Tuesday Toots Live. And I'm going to show a formalized tutorial on how to put it together. And then I do what's called a roundup. That was uh, a project that was basically created by the Silkies for me to do. And this, this live video is designed to um, just directly touch base with the folks that I, you know, sell to, talk to, email to. Um, but it's a it's a weekly touch base thing for us. And I sometimes do a project on there while I'm talking to everyone. And um, so she, uh, let's see, Phyllis is asking how much are your beautiful kits? Each of the mystery kits, I believe, are $39.99. Um, this one comes with two knitted wire chains, some end caps, and all of these different findings. And uh, this is the project that we're going to be making that is also part of the kit. And so you can make these two necklaces from the one kit. If you've got the wire, you have to get the wire from Softflex company, though, because that's not included in the kit. But yeah, I'm going to teach how to do this really elegant um, sort of shape of <laughs> of the chat. I don't know what to call this. Is it a clamshell? But it's not really a clamshell, is it? I don't know. It reminds me of a mermaid tail. Yeah. It's really pretty. We'll go with that. There's and then the seashell at the bottom. Yeah. So yeah, there's like a little like shell-esque component that's included in this large foil bead. Um, and then there is a bale that's included in the kit as well. So I thought, you know, during the roundup, because I took a poll, a lot of folks wanted to learn this option B, if you will. Um, so I'll teach that in a formal tutorial, and then I would teach how to wire wrap this together in the roundup. And uh, Joan's idea, Joan Dice, if you're still here, holler, um, was for me to wear a cowboy hat that her and Sarah Ellis sent to me. Um, <laughs> which is the That's where you got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, they wanted me to wear it during the first TGBE thing. While the crazy pandemic was going on, we wanted to be, you know, very light and buoyant about 
having this event. And so, of course, they want me to get into trouble somehow <laughs> and cause some ruckus. So they sent me and they're like holding me to, you know, yes, yes, yeehaw. Um, they were holding me accountable to wearing this hat. So I did. And then Joan branded this event that I do with the, uh, the catch up session for my customers after the t- formal tutorial as a roundup. And so what Roundup would be, you know, complete without a cowboy hat. <laughs> Do you have your cowboy hat handy? Oh, yeah, I can go grab it. Uh, keep it yes. on. This real quick. I'll be right back. All right. Mila will be right back with his cowboy hat. In the meantime, I wanted to, since we're giving away secrets here, I wanted to give away a little secret to those who love silver silk. There may be an item from Nile in our latest <laughs> kit. It is called the Purple Petals Design Kit. And there might, maybe, be something special from Nile inside. And a big something special. Not a little something special. Big something special. Look at this handsome guy. <laughs> Yeehaw. Yeehaw. I usually also have a, a, a jean jacket that kind of completes the look, if you will, but it is way too hot. And if asking me to wear a jacket is just too much. <laughs> You're the worst secret keeper ever. Who she I didn't to? give it all away. <laughs> <laughs> I am a terrible secret keeper. I, it's not my forte. <laughs> But I wanted you guys to know, because I know some of your your hugest fans are here, and I think they might like this particular kit. Yeah, no, I, I just I got something in there from you. We, we talked about the Purple Petal palette and yeah. what, what requirements you needed. And because I am able to now knit the wire and work that technology, it's it's very agile for me to consider what, what what you need for making this kit happen yeah. and then to just instantly pull it. Well, not instantly, but you know, within a, t- a reasonable time frame to pull out something that's going to work perfect. I hope I didn't get to. Oh, that's surprising your... because uh-huh. normally I feel like you would be like texting me a picture or something at least to ruin the surprise for me at least. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm terrible. But that, um, that kit does have a bead strand that goes with it. So if you end up getting the kit, you may want to get the bead strand. And it is free on orders over $55 this week if you want to grab that too. And this may or may not go along with the part or piece that Nile put in the kit. I'm just, I'm just a class for that kit, like via silver silk too. I'm, I'm putting you on this. Yeah. So sorry. We should plan something. Maybe we could be together. Maybe we could figure out how we can like open it together or. Oh, I would, no, I would love that. I, I, I'm all the way in. I'm in already. I don't know what my schedule is, but I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll let you know a good day and we'll figure it out. All right. We'll talk that would be a lot of fun. I love that. Um, so, anything else you want to tell us that's going on for you um, while we've got you here? Let's see. I'm store wise. There is a 15% off that's off the record <laughs> for any of the capture chain. Because if you're wanting to pick up some silver capture chain for this project that I just showed you how to do today, you can use coupon code SILVERSILK15 at checkout and you'll get 15% off any of the capture chains. Um, okay. And the coupon ends this Saturday. So um, write it down. And mm-hmm. then- it's Coupon code silver silk? Coupon code silver silk 15. Okay. I'll type it in here. Sweet. What else? It's a uh, Tuesday Toots is a tutorial that I do every Tuesday at um, 5.30 central time which means 3.30 East Pacific time. And <laughs> this is such a tongue twister for me. I hate time managing and, you know, uh, the different times that we have. But anyways, okay, focus. 3.30 Pacific time, 6.30 Eastern time. I know I got that right. And 
I do this again every Tuesday, and you can get it on either my YouTube channel, Silver Silk and More, or on the business page for Silver Silk and More as well. So it streams to both, uh, much like the Softflex videos, I'm just on a different schedule. And you can expect a very direct formal tutorial on that YouTube that is then housed there until the end of time. And um, the other videos that are on Facebook and stuff are cataloged within the Silky's uh, Facebook group. Julie is helping me to catalog all those in an easy to find way um, through the guides section in that group. But um, that's a great place to catch me. And uh, I have two different newsletters that I'm putting out or emails. One is directed toward coupons and one is directed toward events, workshops, and tutorials. So if you go to my website, silversilkonline.com, you can scroll down and pick your journey if you want to be notified of one versus the other, because I know emails can be a lot of information at once. And so I'm really trying to very much be direct about what do people want to know with Silver Silk and more and um, get them that information. So other than those things, I'm also on Instagram. You can um, find me there, follow me. I have some reels of some quick demonstrations that I've been doing recently on there, as well as a giant library of designs that are great resources for information uh, or inspiration. And um, can, you know, those pieces are essentially just designs that I have tutorials for. So if you like something on there and you're wanting to learn how to do it, you can then hop over to YouTube and uh, find that design there that, and then recreate it for yourself just with you know some basic instructions and stuff. Awesome. I think that's all I got. I can't, there's a <laughs> lot that goes on in the world of silver. There truly is. I've got workshops and stuff going on all the time, but, mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm not a salesman by any capacity. I actually don't like selling to people. I enjoy talking about the products and stuff, but, and I get excited about it because I'm the one that's making it, but I am the worst about remembering stuff. <laughs> so when people <laughs> approach me of like, what are you doing now? And I'm just like word vomit everything that I could possibly think of without any like, yeah. you know, stuff behind it. But um, yeah, there, no, there's a, a, you will find me on the internet somewhere. <laughs> Margo wants to know what the plant is behind you. Which one? This one? I, you know, I got this one from Ikea um, about three years ago. Is it a real plant? Yeah, it's a real plant. Huh. Um, it gets kind of like enough sunlight through here and then I just feed it once a week. I have a lot of plants in my house. I'm like a plant hoarder, borderline plant hoarder. I would say it's not super over the top. I just, I love greenery in, in my yeah. house, you know. Um, but yeah, I've got some Monstera, which I'm obsessed over. Um, At Ikea? I know that one I got, I think I got that Monstera from Lowe's. This one I got from Ikea, including the pot that it's in. Um, Kristen has some Monstera questions. So you'll, she'll have to ask you. They were just talking about it on the last presentation. Um, so perfect. She cool. was wondering if it could live in a desert environment. So. Ooh. You know, I don't know. I, I have it grown two ways. There's one that's in a giant pot with dirt. And then there's another one that is hydroponic and it's been growing in water for about four years now. So it's got some oh. really monster roots for sure. But um, the same leaves have been the leaf for like two or three years now. It hasn't died. Interesting. They're really strange plants in their their roots tend to look like tentacles and kind of like invading the space and stuff. So you kind of have to trim them back because it looks a little weird. But yeah, they're they're sustaining well. And then I've got some orchids that I grow hydroponically as well. Um, they're an interesting plant themselves. Um, and then just a bunch of vines everywhere. I've got my headboard has a has a trough in it or behind mm -hmm. it. And behind in that trough is a bunch of vines so that it looks like there's some greenery within the headboard. Oh, bottom. that's neat. So the thing is it's, it's upkeep because I have to water it all the time, but it's so beautiful. Yeah, my husband is the green thumb in our house and he's been redoing our yard since we moved into this house and putting in 
um, plants that don't need to be watered that are drought resistant. And I was, I was just noticing, I've been sitting in the window this week to have good light and at the front of the house is out this window. And I keep seeing people stop and admire this like succulent garden that he created. And like literally there are people walking by and they just stop and stare at it for like 10 <laughs> minutes. And I'm like, what are you doing out there? That is I, anyone that can design landscape, especially outside, it's, it's a, it is a God-given talent. And mm -hmm. to also configure what type of space accommodates the specific type of plants that it can grow as well. And trying to pick out those plants and, you know, plant them accordingly. Anything, I have a topiary outside that I had for a little while during a rainy season here that flourish with the pine tree that I put in it. Um, and it's a beautiful three layered topiary mm -hmm. and it went with the house look and everything, but it, it already dried up. And then the previous plant that I had in it, which was another topiary dried up as well. And so I just think that I need to put a cactus in it and call it done. Do a succulent, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm curious, like I'm gonna go out there and look and see if something's blooming or what is going on. <laughs> That spot that's getting everyone so entranced because um, it's been interesting to see people doing that. But I also I find it curious um, since we're talking about plants, is, you know, Abby Berta is really into plants and Christy Friesen is really into plants yeah. and Andrew Thornton <laughs> is really into plants. And it's just like, so interesting that those two things go together so well. I think plants and cats. I don't have a cat, but I am obsessed with them. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna get a corgi. I'm waiting for I your want corgi. One day. They're so so cute. They're so cute. I would love to. Yeah, maybe one day a rescue corgi would be someone an, a, an elder corgi. Oh. Meddle with. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Right now, I don't think it's feasible because I've got too much going on. You know. So no humans and or animals right now. Uh, the plants are quite enough, but um, yeah, down the road, I would love to have a elder corgi. <laughs> well, as you know, I could talk to you for hours and still be intrigued. So I will, <laughs> I will, <laughs> I'll save that for later. But I do want to invite everybody to come to our after party at 4.30, it won't be too long. We're gonna just hang out for a little bit and then Rebecca at Design and Adorn has a video starting at five. So we're gonna encourage all of you to run over there and see her. I am talking Pacific time. So 4.30 Pacific is 7.30 Eastern. Um, Nile, can you tell us what it is central? Um, that would be 6.30 Central time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so we'll see you in just a little bit and we'll have a few of the presenters there and we'll just kind of decompress a little bit with a glass of wine. Please do join us. Thank you everybody for joining us all week long. And don't forget if you've missed any of the presentations, we've created a YouTube playlist. You can go to our YouTube channel and you can see all of the different um, presentations available from this week and rewatch them at your leisure. And uh, please do this weekend, do some binge watching for jewelry making. And we hope that you learned a lot and found some new friends, um, whether it was in the chat or uh, being able to learn more about some of these great companies and friends of Softlex. That's Thank you. been so special. Thank you so much again. I'm just humbled that you would include me into this event. And I love working with you. Anytime that we get together, it's always, always a fun time. And uh, I hope that the project that we picked up today will just add to the, the library within folks' creative minds to try something new and interesting and fun. Thank you so much for being here, Nile. And just being for our, our friend in general and using our products. We are so blessed to have you in our lives. And I'm looking forward to the in-person. Oh yeah, I was gonna show that. That's a great. Look at this cute picture of Nile on the mug. <laughs> yeah, I got to do a photo shoot with my friend for various, you know, sponsors and products and stuff that I used in. Of course, I had to do something with Softflex Wire. And then I never used this picture until today, and well, until this, this opportunity for this mug came up. <laughs> it was like destiny. 
If you're right-handed, you can get you can get a mug and you can look at Nile every <laughs> morning because he's right front and center. I actually, I think Damien was going to switch you somewhere else. And I was like, no, I want Nile right there. I love <laughs> Nile. So there's Nile. If you're left-handed, you get to look at beautiful Kay and Andrew. But either way, you get everybody who presented this week. And we're going to fill this mug with goodies. So it's going to have some beads from Jesse James beads. Tierra Cast. We're going to have a couple coupons, a gift certificate, wire, all sorts of good, fun stuff. Absolutely. I think there's going to be some silver silk in there too once we yes. coordinate. Yes, some silver uh, silk. Let's get that sorted. So you want to pick up the mug though. It's a, from what I understand, it's going to be a really, really good resource and Deal. to have to, yeah, for all the, the crafting necessities. Yes. And Thomas just dropped a link so you can pre-order that. We're going to order them on Monday and then it'll probably be a couple weeks for them to get in, get all the stuff from the presenters, and then I'm going to personally put it together. So that's also tough because I'm busy, but <laughs> I like to put my little personal touch on things. So I, I'm going to be the one who puts it together. Um, yeah. So thank you, Mile, for being here. We so appreciate it. We'll see you again at 430. Yeah, I'll be here. Thanks, everybody. And you can learn more about Nile on his website, which is what, Nile? Silversilkonline.com. And then you can, of course, find out more about us at softlexcompany.com. Bye, everybody.